Blessings on 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 blessings. And I truly uh, uh, believe that the blessings of the Lord will be up on you. Thank you so much again. Thank all of you for tuning in again to Monday Night Talks right here at Network uh, Believers. I'm Pastor Eugene Whitmore, the proud pastor of the Network of Believers. People call me Pastor G. I am excited about this time, uh, a season uh, of blessings. I call it the season of blessings. And there are so many things that the Lord, your God, your Father has in store for you, his child. His child, God has God's heart concerning you is to overwhelm you. Hear me, overwhelm you with blessings. His His desire is that you live life at the maximum level, at the maximum level. Hey, hey, uh, Mikey J, blessings to you, man. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Susie Marshall. Blessings, blessings. Uh, of course, Lady T, Felita. Guys, share, 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 share. For those of you that are on now and for those of you that will come on later, please share this video. I'm entering into a segment of teachings on grace. And the reason why the Lord has uh, uh, prompted me in this particular time because of this release I just mentioned to you. The releasing of a season of overwhelming. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Overwhelming. This will be a time of overwhelming blessings. Uh, just like you as parents do uh, to your children. When you see them in a, in a time perhaps that they're not feeling their best and they're being overwhelmed by things in life. And you go in and you notice it and then you go in and you rescue them. And you pull them out and you bless them. That's the time, that's the season that we are going to see or how we're going to see the hand of God in our lives. So you have to prepare for this moment in life. Please hear me and, and please take this advice. Please prepare, prepare because you will get according to your level of preparation. That's what you're going to receive. It's going to be received at the level of your uh, preparation. So that's why we're going to have to be reformed in our minds as it relates to the grace of God concerning us. And tonight I want to dig into that. If you will, please share. Thank you, Renee. Uh, 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 Dan, thank you, uh, uh, Pastor David. Blessings. Jackie Dyer, blessings to you. Now, I'm going to pray God's blessing upon this word that the ears of the hearer would be open and the understanding would be open and God would release his grace to teach. Because this is a moment. This is a great moment in God. And Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you so much for this season. We thank you, God. It's been tough. It's been rough. God, some days we didn't even know what we were going to do. But grace covered us. Grace kept us. And now grace is about to catapult us into this new life, God. Those that have waited on you, God, you're going to show them why. You're going to give them reason. And God, and I thank you so much for being so good to us. Always. You are always good. You are all, Even when I can't define what the good is, you are still good. And you are still God. And there is still great intent for my life and for the life of those that are hearing my voice on tonight. And I thank you so much for being a vessel tonight. That would spread your gospel, your good news to the hearers, hearers of those that are in the struggle, God. You didn't lead them. You didn't lead them. So open up our mind. Open up our understanding so that we can understand exactly what you are intending for us right now. And I thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Thank you so much, Apostle Henderson. Apostle Rodney Henderson, thank you so much, Sylvia Wilson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I need to jump into this word. Now. I want to uh, advise you, prepare your hearing. Here's what I need you to pray. Say, God, uh, let me hear what you are saying in this season and don't allow me to cover or mask what you are saying by my old mindset and old teaching. If you would pray that prayer, God is about to open something up. God is about to answer some prayers. Now I mentioned earlier, this is a time of extreme grace on the life of the of the people of God. Uh, 
you will see things happen in this season that you never experienced before. And the reason why you're going to have to be reformed in your thinking, this is why you're going to have to be reformed in the way you approach God. Because the Father will release something to you in this season that if you're not careful, you're going to deem yourself unworthy and you will not accept. You will deem yourself unworthy and not accept. The Father is about to release. Hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying to you. And you got to prepare yourself. This is a tandem work. This is a work that is a tandem. God won't do it by himself. God refused to do it without you. God refuses to allow this to happen without you. And so oftentimes as, as bring, being brought up in the church, we had this impression impressed upon us that God was automatically going to do something without your participation. That's not truth. We have to agree with God to see the manifestation of God. Now, God will always treat us as his children. He will always feed you and give you the necessities of life. But what I am saying tonight is not just the necessities of life. This is called overflow. This is the time of overflow. You will see overflow. You will see overflow. It, you will see overflow like you've never seen it before. If you're not prepared to hear this, you will condemn yourself and you will allow teachings to enter your ears that will then dilute your mind and then you will fight against what God said because the thing that God is going to release to his people, we are not worthy of it. We are not worthy of it. I'm going to tell you right up front, we are not worthy of it. But worthy is the lamb that was slain for me. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for me and that was slain for you. So now you've been put in a position to receive God's best. You are put in position in this thing called adoption into what is called sonship. Now are we the sons of God. And what God is about to release, it has not yet appeared. But he's waiting for us to prepare ourselves to strengthen our cords because there is a release of God into the life of the hearers that can receive this by faith. Now, I want to be very careful in this teaching process because I need you to understand the Lord is going to ward off in this grace season those spirits that are familiar. Now, I want to explain this because these are the things that you will have to get over to receive this and be released into it. They are familiar spirits. Now, when we think about the attack of the enemy, we always think that he's going to come straight at us. But these attacks are not coming straight at you because you will recognize it. This is the enemy coming in subliminal ways with friendships. Hear me? Friendships. You got people that you call your prayer partner, which is actually the component that is against you walking into your next level. They don't even know it. They don't. I'm say it again because because I felt that one. I felt that there are some people that you call your prayer partner, and they are the reason that you've been hindered your next season from walking into your next season. It's because you have given them ear. You have you you have listened to them because they know all of the lingo. There are a lot of people in your life that know a lot of lingo. They know all of the catchphrases. They know all of the the, the words to say. They've been trained. They got the catchphrase. They got the buzzwords because they are people that desire to have doors. And so they can't, they got all the catchphrases. They know all of the lingo. They know how to gaslight. They know how to do all of that stuff. And they are the hindrance because it is not a real spirit. It's an, it's, it's an act. So we got to be very careful as we walk into this next level. I need you to hear me because you are the agent that God will use. Some of you don't even know exactly what it is that God is trying to use me to do. And that's why he's saying teaching is so important because this time and this season, you will embrace what you tried to run from. And the blessings of the Lord will be upon you. Now, listen, not just you getting a new job, a new uh, a car, a new house. That's not, that's, that's a part of what you're about to walk in. But there's a new level of peace. There's a new level of healing. There's a new level of confidence. There's a new level of everything that is coming to you. There's a new level of obedience in God. God won't have to fight with you in this particular time of grace release to do what he said. 
Life is about to be happy. You're going to be happy on all fronts because of your obedience to God. Now receive that, receive that because this is the time that it should happen. So there will be a separation. Hear me, there will be a separation. There are some people that need to separate from some people that sound just like you, look just like you. You need to deem them a familiar spirit and you guys are not good for one another. It's not going to allow either of you to do anything incredible it causes both of you to stay on the same level i don't know why i'm saying this but somebody need to hear this tonight there's some separation that you need to separate from not the people that you deem the enemy because he, he he'll make them your footstool but it's some friend of me that will subtly as jesus says to to peter satan desires to sift you subtly and to keep you normal there are some people that's trying to keep you normal and that's their task is to keep you normal because they lack you just like you are. So here's the teaching tonight. I got to get into this teaching. Here's it. Here it is. Grace released me into my inheritance. Grace will release you into your inheritance. Grace is going to release you into your inheritance. I need you to receive that. Receive that. Grace will release you into your inheritance. Get ready for this. Get ready for a new mind. Get ready for new operations. Because in the land called inheritance, there are new prompts. There are new ideas. There are new inspiration. There's new everything over there. Don't even try to get a grasp on grace setting where you are or in the position that you are. You can never see it there. You're going to have to make a move. You're going to have to bust the move. It is your time to allow God to do what God is trying to do in your life. This next season of your life is going to be an incredible word. An incredible word time so that there's an incredible harvest that will come to your life. Now, I need to go in and I do need to do some teaching because your mind is going to have to be renewed. There's some steps to this. There's some foundational pieces. We want to be here, but we got to go back to the foundation because it's the foundation that we have established that is stopping us from walking into the blessings of the Lord. We don't even know it. So we got to get back in this thing and look again. I want to share something with you in the scripture because I want your mind to think about this. I want things are going to make sense. We, we've had a lot of what is called superstition. We done had a lot of things that, that didn't make sense, but we went with it because we were church babies. We didn't have, we didn't, we didn't think, and, but other people that are critical thinkers think, well, now what is, how does that make sense? And we get mad at them because you, 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 you're not trusting. No, I want to know. I want to trust God, but I want to know what he's doing. We, we were taught that we're not supposed to know what we just got to wait and not know. God says, no, I want you to know. I always teach uh, Isaiah 55 when it says, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Uh, uh, we thought that was God uh, speaking of his supremacy. How was, what, now, God is supreme over us. But what he's saying is, I wish they were. I wish my thoughts. Let this mind be in you. I wish my ways were your ways. Let, let my ways be your ways. He desires this because what he has created you to be, what he's created you to do, you're going to need his ways. You're going to need his thoughts. You're going to need his, when things come up, you're going to have to think like your father to actually accomplish things that your father want you to accomplish. That's all he's saying. And God is trying his urgent. God is urgent about you getting this. Do you hear me? So now it's going to cause, it's going to call for us to be challenging our thinking. This season will be tough for the seasoned. I'm going to say it again. This season can be kind of tough for the season. What do you mean? For those that have been in operation for quite some time, this is going to be a challenging moment. But like Paul says, I'm going to try to apprehend that which has been trying to apprehend me. Why? Because I never lived there before. I live good. I live some good things. But what God has placed before me in vision, I have not touched. I haven't seen, neither ear have heard. What I, God is about to give you a strategy. Watch this to your energy. Man, you got, girl, you got energy. But now God is going to give you the proper strategy to match your energy. What can stop you there? Absolutely nothing. You're going to max some things out that people have been trying to do for years. But this is your season. Now, but we are going to be challenging the word. We got to relook at the scripture. We got to look at the dichotomy between old covenant language and new covenant language. Why is this important? Because most of our teachings on grace is diluted with Old Testament truth. We don't know it. And the enemy does. And he says, yes. Because once we start diluting and with good intent, 
Old Testament words into a new covenant, we have just diluted grace. When grace is diluted, it's not effective. Many of you are not seeing the manifestation. It's not because of the devil. It's because of the dilution, the, the diluting of the grace. Get ready because it's going to happen. Now, when we look at the scripture real quickly, real quickly, I got something I've got to share with you because I need you to rethink some things. Would you guys share this? Share this. Get 10 people in here. Get 10 people in here. I want to share something. I want to share something. Now, listen to me. Thank you so much, Pastor Gail Johnson, for being in the house. Apostle Dennis Cook, blessings. Uh, Mama Lois, blessings. Blessings. Priscilla, blessings. Now, watch this. Watch this. The Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and is profitable for doctrine. Now, listen to what I just said. All scripture is given by the inspiration. The scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible said. And is profitable for doctrine. In other words, it's not declaring that every doctrine is used in scripture. It's saying that the scripture would be profitable if you're going to come up with a doctrine. But we know that there's doctrines that don't include the truth of scripture. Now, please hear me. Hear, hear me, because I want to declare something, because I need you to see this. I need you to hear me on this. Now, Scripture, my friend, Dr. Otis Richmond, bless his man. Scripture, the Scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Here's what I need you to know, and here's what I re need to release into your thinking. The words, the words, the words in the verse are inspired. Please hear me. The words in the verse are inspired. All Scripture. The words in the verse are inspired, but not all punctuation is. I need to say that again because somebody's going to catch this. Somebody's about to catch it. The words in the scripture are inspired, but not all the punctuation because there was translation. I need y'all to hear me. When the Holy Spirit awakened me to this, I was like, whoa, whoa. All words, all scripture, watch this. Is given by the inspiration, but not all the punctuation is given by the Holy Ghost because of the translator. <laughs> this particular truth, hear me, my brothers and sisters, is capable, have the capability, if received, to change your life forever this would change listen to me i'm not talking about i'm not using catchphrases i'm not trying to be sound good to you i'm here for change there's too much available on the table that we're leaving because we don't have the right mind set to even house what god is saying all scripture is given by the inspiration of the holy spirit and it's profitable for that doctrine but not all punctuation listen all the commas ain't in the right place. All the periods and the exclamation mark. That's where we get an issue at. That's where the issue come in. Now, I'm going to take you to a scripture right now to show you something very powerful. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 59, 19. You might not know the A clause, but you know the B clause. I want to deal with it to show you this. And I want to shift the commas to the right place so that we can shift what we believe and how we operate. In our Christian believing life. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Now look at this. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the, here's what we are familiar with. When the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Now listen to what that said. When the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Now please hear what I'm about to say. If we was to shift the comma and put the comma in the right, when the enemy come in, comma, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. This is what the Lord is desiring us to know. This is what the Lord is saying to us. You got to know this. If not, here's the after effects of us not knowing that 
all the scripture was given by the inspiration, but not the commas of the punctuation because of the interpreter's interpretation. He put it where he thought was necessary. But we know God is a God that is faithful because when we are in the, 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 the race of our life, he wants us to have the information that causes us to win. So here's how it should be. Again, when the enemy come in, comma, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against whatever he comes up with. The misplacing, my brothers and sisters, of the comma, what it does, it promotes Satan to the position of aggressor. This, this comma has promoted Satan to the position of aggressor and God to the position of the reactor. Because Satan is coming in like a flood. God, what you going to do because of what he just done? And God says, really? Really? I don't react to nothing. I don't have to react to nothing. I am proactive. When Satan comes in, the spirit of the Lord, which already protects you, will lift up a standard. In other words, it causes something that on the inside of you to rise up so that you can recognize the enemy, number one, and then declare to him, you are already defeated. Not going to be. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting for victory. I already have it. This is why we got to be very careful when we go to conferences and we go to all these things looking for impartation. What can you impart to me? If I'm full, what can you impart? No, you can only, by you being one, re represent or recognize one. This is why it's so important that no matter what a title is, if they are not one, you can't allow them to be one with you. Are you listening to me? So now we got to change this mentality that Satan is the aggressor and God is reacting to his aggression. Because that's caused the believer, us as believers, always to be the victim. That's why we have this victim mentality. That's why we're always the victim of attacks. And God's got to come in and give me something to survive this flood from the enemy. Man, where did we get this stuff from? And we say that we have a victim victorious gospel, but we only have one that causes our God to react to something that he created? Really? God is only going to react to something that he, he is the all-powerful, all-knowing, but all, the, 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 the greatest power he possesses is to react to the enemy? If this revelation is received, it changes your life forever. You go from the victim to the victor. You would know that God has already released. He's not reacting to the enemy. He's not reacting to the enemy. He brushes it off his shoulder. When you understand the mind, I always teach this teaching that when Jesus met Legion, that was not the only devil he saw because he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And if you are that and you're God in the flesh, you see all spirits because you are the master of spirits. Why is it that Legion is the one that he deals with? Why did he deal with every demon that he saw? Because he was already the master of it. And the conversation with Legion was just to verify that he was the master. The, the, the Legion, when he saw Jesus, automatically came and bowed down. Why? Because you are the master. We are many, but you are the master. <laughs> you are many, but we are the ma you. We are many, but you are the master. So we bow down, and then what did he do? The the many start begging the master one to to, to, to w w please be merciful on. Them. Please, please, please. Now that's not the only instance that the enemy knows that he is to bow down, but he won't tell you, and he ain't gonna tell most of your preachers because. He wants you to be one that is subjected to attack and feel like this is the part, the best part of me is when I'm attacked. Why? Because when I'm attacked, then my God is going to react. When God see me crying, then he's going to jump up and do something about my situation. Where did we get this stuff from? Where does this stuff come from? Man, after the blessings of the Lord in his word comes through his son, Jesus, it would take a good preacher to mess this up. It takes work to mess this up. So we got to change the commas. We got to shift 
the punctuation so that we go from a victim to the victor. We're not fighting for, we're fighting from. We have already won this thing. What weapons are the proper weapons to use to fight a defeated foe? That's a good question. What weapon do I select? Hmm. I'm about to fight somebody that's already defeated, totally annihilated, made an open shame of. What do I use to fight him with? The very posture of you looking for a weapon to fight a defeated foe tells the, the, the defeated foe something about you. It tells the defeated foe that you have not been taught right. And your teaching is what is your terror. The teaching that you receive. The teaching you receive. It has caused us to be victims at its greatest level. We are still victims. We are just saved by grace. I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You don't get that that was, that was old covenant language. David has a right to say it in Psalms 51. But that was pre-Jesus. You hear me? One man's sin made us all sinners, as Romans 5 said, but one man's righteous made you righteous. So ever since Calvary, you are not born into sin. You are born into righteousness. That's a tough pill to swallow. I should have named this a tough pill to swallow. So when we change the commas and the punctuations, I have debates with people. I'm not really at debate, but I have people coming at me because they are religious. I know what the, I know the spirit when it rises up. And I would do a courtesy sometimes to show them this. But most of the time, the Lord told me, don't even fight with them. Let them. There is a people that hear my voice. There's a people that know what I want. And you are spending too much time trying to talk to a closed mind. Speak to those that are ready to hear. So with the misplacing of the comma, it promotes Satan. When the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the, the, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. No, when Satan comes in, comma, right there, the Spirit of the Lord. The, the Spirit of the Lord is the flood that is going to wash out everything that's been in your life too long. Get ready for grace right now. I need to speak that on somebody. Get ready for grace to release you out of the presence of people that's been teaching you the wrong thing, that's been making you a victim, and you've been shouting over being victimized through the word of the Lord. Listen to me. There will be a major moment of truth being revealed. We are in that time right now. God is raising up the people now that are not afraid, not trying to be accepted, not trying to get preaching engagement, not worried about who's going to let them in, who's going to do this, not even caring about that. Their only uh, concern now is that people get the truth, that people can walk into the truth. We are seeing a grace revolution right now. I want to prophesy because here's what about the here's what is about to happen. There is going to be a revolution, a a, a resurrection, a a a a, a an, an awakening of souls that will come to Christ. Please hear me. They are coming to Christ. Will he come? Will he allow them to come to your synagogue? Will he allow? The Bible says if you read the scripture, he always went to their synagogue. He called it their synagogue because he might be invited there. He might not. But when it came to the temple, he went inside there kicking over tables. Why? Because I own this. Maybe he don't own where you are because if his word is not the word. Now, again, I'm going to get into something right here because there needs to be understood. Just because you read something verbatim out of the scripture don't mean that you're in truth. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you have to explain that to me. I will, and I am tonight. Just because you have been whooped by people that get up and say, I'm coming straight out of the scripture. Straight out of the scripture. And that's the greatest tool that Satan has in this season. Because any word that is not rightly divided becomes a tool in the hands of Satan. Everybody that planned and was vital in the execution of the crucifix of Christ. Well, biblical scholars, go study it and you will find. There's a moment of truth that is happening right now. God is about to feel. There's an awakening. He says, my sheep hear my voice. They already know. Other sheep I have, I'm not looking for them. I must bring. The, 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 now the task is finding the right spot to, get, to, to, to allow them to land. Here's what is going to be the greatest challenge right now of what we call the assembly in church. Will we have the right words that God trusts? Will we trust God to 
fill our mouth with things that we never said before so that he can allow it to hit the ears of the sheep that know his voice. Will we allow him? Will we allow him to say, Lord, will we say this to the Lord? Lord, whatever you need to do and take out of me, I say yes to your will. <laughs> I, you can do it now. Now, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. Because many have built kingdoms and they say, I can't. I, no, no, no. I'll fight you for this. The Lord is about to raise up. Hear me now. Hear me now. The Lord is about to raise up leadership. And it's the, the picture of David is a perfect picture of the leadership that is about to be raised up. Rough on the edges. Don't know a whole lot of words about a whole lot of stuff. But know how to worship God. Don't don't know any of the lingo. The, 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 don't know any of the church jargons. But because of grace, they're going to be raised up. I need to move on. I need So there'll be a moment of truth being revealed. There's some of you been praying for your, your child and it looked like they're going that away. But God said they're just going that away for a season. Now, I want to reemphasize something real quick. I got tomorrow night, too. So I'm going to be teaching this. I'm digging in. I'm going in because there is a, a word that is coming. You are about to be free from something that you thought you were going to have to live with the rest of your life. You had mastered the moment, but you've been limping through life with it. And God is about to release you. That's another one to teach. You don't have to limp through your life for the rest of your life. You're about to release, be released to run. I don't care how old you got and think God is done and he forgot and I just got to live with this. God is about to release you. But the, the requirement and challenge is that you receive the word of the Lord in this season. You got to receive present truth. Again, when the enemy comes in, comma, the spirit of the Lord. Like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. We got to get this because if we don't, it always makes Satan the aggressor, God the one that is uh, a plan uh, from behind trying to figure out how I'm going to save my people from, 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 from what the devil did. The devil just did something. I got to figure out a strategy to save my people. And unfortunately, I didn't figure out the strategy in time. And some of them, get, Satan got, he got some of them. And, but I, I'm going to figure out a strategy where uh, we can, we can reduce the casualties. That's not the gospel I'm preaching. That's not, grace will cover you. Grace will allow you to walk into your new level. It's like this. When Jesus, uh, uh, was, uh, uh it was told by God that there's a releasing of my son. There's a baby that's going to be born. <laughs> this is why Satan began to react because of the word that has already been released. That's always the picture. It's even in the days of Pharaoh when God said there's a deliverer born. Pharaoh said, let me kill every child. He, the enemy is the reactor. When you see the enemy acting up, receive this into your spirit now. When you see the enemy acting up, he is acting at the level of the word that's been released on your life. For those of you that say the devil is acting a fool, God has released the light, a word into your life that is crazy. And so the enemy is trying to do crazy stuff to prevent you from locking in. Do you hear me? He's trying to stop you. He's trying to distract you from locking in. If I was you, I would lock in. I got to emphasize this. I got to emphasize this. This moment of truth. Get ready. The Lord is releasing truth now. It's going to be a challenging truth. It's going to be a challenging truth. Somebody said the other day. That if you are not preaching the grace message that calls people call, that calls people to talk about you and say you don't lost your mind, you are not really preaching grace at all, because grace will do some crazy things. <laughs> some crazy things are about to happen for you at the releasing of this truth. Now, I want to ask the question because this is the perfect question for this particular time zone that we're in, this this particular dynamic we're in right now. The question is, what is truth? So, Pastor G, when you say the Lord is releasing truth, the first question is asked, what is truth? That is the perfect question that you should be asking. What is truth? Perhaps what I call truth might not be the truth that I suppose we're going after. Oh, my God. You need to think this. Don't you think and don't you be sure that what I'm thinking is what I'm supposed to be thinking. Because God has shift up on you. 
Now, I know the teacher said God never changes. He's always the same. That's not what the Bible meant in context. I'm the Lord and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Uh, Malachi 3, verse 6. We got to do the context to really get what he's talking about. To read the text without context, we are just, somebody say, in, in the position to be conned. He's talking to Jacob, who, who, who by grace have received a blessing from the God, an inheritance, called his own people, the sons of Jacob, uh, whose name changed to Israel. Now he got 12 tribes of Israel. They get an inheritance from us, from God. Never did what they were supposed to do. Never lived up to the quote unquote standard to receive that level of blessing. And God is standing there telling them in Malachi 3 verse 6, say, I am God. I keep my word. If I was a God that changed, so I'm God and I change not. If I was, therefore ye sons of Jacob would never receive the promise. But because I said I was going to do it, I'm going to give it to you. So we got to get that in context because God right now is shifting on uh, on us and we don't even know where he is. We, we, we don't even know where. So when we can't find him because that takes work, what do we do? We revert back to the oldness that we came out of. That's what we're seeing happen after COVID. We're reverting back to the oldness that we came out of. Just like Jesus preached three years, three years to the people that were around him that this, there's going to be a day that I'm going to die. There's going to be a day I'm going to be taken in the hands of sinful men. I'm going to take gold to Calvary. The moment this happens, they are saying, oh my God, the one that we had hugged was our savior. He was not that at all. Why? Because our high priest took him and killed him, man. And we are devastated. He says, oh fool, it's not of hearts to believe. Uh, now Christ, they have suffered first and then entered. You don't know the truth. Well, their minds kept reverting back to old because they couldn't grasp. When I can't grasp the new, I'm going to revert back to old. And the enemy going to cause me to be greater in my old season than I could ever be in my new season because I'm so caught up in it. Please hear me. And so the fisherman that was fisherman when he came went back to fishing. You will know when somebody didn't receive revelation, they'll go back to doing what they done prior to getting what they call revelation. They're back on the, the scene doing the same thing. That's evidence that it was not received. It's scriptoria. It's in the Bible. So, so what is truth? What is truth? Do you know that Pilate asked Jesus this question? In John chapter 18, there's a conversation. Jesus is on trial before Pilate. Now, he was illegally tried the night before at the house of the high priest, whom didn't have power to try him. Do you know a religious spirit don't have the power to try the truth? Oh, my God. A religious spirit don't have the power, don't have the jurisdiction to try the truth or put the truth on trial. So what did they do? Since they didn't have the power to put the truth on trial, they took them to the governmental officials. Now the government is involved. Now the government is involved. And so Pilate is, 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 is questioning Jesus. Pilate is questioning. This is in the 18th chapter of John. Pilate is questioning Jesus. And, and after Jesus is telling him what his purpose was, why he came, I want to read that because I need you to see this because this is a perfect picture of where we are right now. Here is the conversation. This is John chapter 18. I'm going to read the 37th and the 38th verse. Look at what it says here. This is the conversation, Pilate and Jesus. Now look at this. It says, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou said that I am a king? Then Jesus says, To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Look at that. I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now look at this verse, because this is important. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out. In other words, once he said the question, what is truth? After Jesus making this declaration, for this cause I have come. For this cause I come. I came to give the truth. Now, this is so powerful to me. I need to look at that again. And therefore, uh, 
And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king? He, because Jesus, Jesus answered, Thou said that I am. To this end I was born. His Jesus making the declaration of why he's here. To this end I was born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now listen to what he just said. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. Now, the reason why Pilate is scratching his head. There's a reason why he's scratching his head. And then he looks at Jesus in the face and says, what is truth? And slams the door. Didn't even wait for the reply. Now, that's interesting to me because if you ask him what is truth, let him reply. But he wouldn't let him reply. Why? Because this was Jesus. Now, let me explain to you. This was Jesus. He was the implementer of a new covenant truth. That's why I say, for this cause I have come to implement truth. He was being, listen, listen, Jesus, the implementer of the truth, a current truth, a new covenant truth, was being fought and declared a heretic, listen, by a religious spirit. What was the religious spirit? His own people that he said, I came to my own. He finds a religious spirit. He says that I am trying to give this religious spirit truth and they are rejected. They're calling me a heretic. They have actually brought me before government to actually try me and to call me guilty. And now I'm saying to the arbitrator that I'm the truth and he's confused. He's saying I'm confused. Why? Because the people that you say you came to, the religious spirit now are saying that they don't want you. They don't want a Jesus move. They don't want a new, they don't want a grace move. They are happy with what they got. So what is truth, man? That's an honest question that Pilate had a right to ask. What is to your truth? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Your people don't want you. This is why it was so confusing. It's because both of them were in fact living in a truth. Both of them were true. See, he's dealing with an old covenant mindset, which at one time was the truth. But when God decided that he was going to shift and send his son Jesus, he said that truth is no longer the truth that is applicable to me being in operation with you. You're going to have to shift into the truth. And the religious mindset refused to shift. So it's confusing everybody that's watching. What is this that is happening before me? It's Pilate. That's the question that Pilate is asking. What is happening right here? I'm confused. And still to this day, it also confuses most of them that call, most of us, that call ourselves the teachers of a new covenant. What is truth? What is truth? Well, it's a mixture. You got to take some of the old and mix it with some of the new and then what you get is boom. No, that's not what God said. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 verse number 15. I need to read that into your hearing. Look at what it says. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, my question to God was this. God, if the truth is the truth, why does it need dividing? I didn't get this until I dug deep into this and God began to the minister to me. This is the truth of two different covenants. This is bigger than just saying one truth, just reading something that's truth and saying dividing between it. No, it's God in this moment, in this pivotal moment of scripting, shifting from an old covenant into a new covenant, meaning that there would have to be the acceptance of something that has never been heard. Truth was truth. Hear me. Truth was truth until truth was re-released. Here's what I'm saying. Truth was truth until God decided that he wanted to shift it. He wanted to shift the language of truth. And God, who was the initiator of truth, can make the call of saying now i'm shifting into a present truth this is why it was so difficult for religious mindsets 
to get it. Now, no, we lived this for centuries. Moses gave us this. This was what God told Moses to do. They couldn't understand that, in fact, you are telling the truth, and it was the truth. But now, there is a truth being released by the one that originated the truth. I know that's heavy, but this is what we are trying to get to. And if we don't get here in a hurry, we'll lose in another season. The reason the Lord is so strongly emphasizing this is because many are becoming victims. Hear me now. You have become a victim to teachings through teachers who quote straight out of the scripture, quote it verbatim, line upon line, precept upon precept out of the scripture, but have not rightly divided the word of truth. We have not rightly divided the word of truth that was applicable to an old covenant and the word of truth that is applicable to a new covenant. The new covenant is not an addendum to the old. If you read in Hebrews, it says very clearly, this is not an add-on to it. You have got to, as Galatians 4 says, as it gives what is called the allegory of the bondwoman, Hagar, and Mount Sinai, where, where, where Moses got the law on Exodus 20, and it deals with Sarah. We got to get this. We got to get this. And it says, kick it out now. You got to get rid of it because it's going to cause conflict in your life. If you don't get rid of it today. Now, see, the Bible says in Genesis, in Galatians chapter three, verse 13, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curses were under the law. Curses were under the law. This is so important. You cannot be a new covenant believer and believe that you are cursed by God. You can't live under curses. Christ has redeemed. Either you're going to believe that Christ did what he did, or you're going to believe that you're living under curses. Now listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. You can't live under curses. But when the enemy calls us to believe because we have become victim to teachers that is teaching what we call straight out of the scripture, straight out of the scripture, he's straight out of the scripture, and we accept this stuff, now we accept them what is called, listen to me, because this is the problem. We have mishap after mishap after mishap, after mishap, and it confuses us because, Lord, I'm doing everything that they told me to do. He says, what you're doing is trying to mix an old covenant language with a new covenant language. It's never going to work. It is diluting your grace. Here is an easy way to determine, only got a few minutes, to determine if the teacher is operating in current truth. Can I give that to you? Here is an easy way to determine if the teacher that you allow him to teach you is operating in, in current truth. If he, hear me now, if he goes to Leviticus or Deuteronomy, I put in parentheses here, brackets, Moses, if he goes down, this is an easy way to determine, oh my God, if a teacher is teaching current truth. I wish some more people was here to hear this. I need them all to get mad at one time. I want. I, I, I need it all to get. I, I, come on. If he or she is teaching, and he goes to Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Moses to validate his argument and to condemn you, please hear me. They are not operating in current truth. Why is this important? That you know, the Lord is emphasizing now. It's emphasized because many of you are being victimized by people that are going to the scripture verbatim. And that's got to be true. And you don't have, you don't know how to refuse it because they, they said that out of, that came straight, who, who that came straight out of the Bible. And it sounds familiar to you. Why? Because it's what grandma told you. It's what is going. And I know if anybody lived it, grandma lived it. So she's, he sounds like grandma. So I got to embrace it. And what is causing is mishap to happen in your life. Please hear this truth. The people that plotted, hear me now, and actually executed was the vital piece in the execution of the death, the crucifix of your Savior, were biblical scholars that could not transcend out of an old covenant mindset and allow the new truth of God. When I say new truth, to get under people's skin. I'm telling you what the scripture says. So you are knowing somebody 
is 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 not teaching current truth. It's when they go to the Leviticus, they go to Deuteronomy, and they try to beat you over the head with it, and to, and to argue with you, you you you, you would know an, an an old covenant preacher, because he is full of debate. I love debate. I'm gonna whoop you with the word. The word is not to whoop you. He sent his word to heal them. Oh my God, the word is not the, listen to me. I know what you've been taught. I know what you, I have this discussion. I, I have this discussion with scholars all over everywhere. The word is, the, no, God has never sent a word to whoop you. He's always sent a word to lift you up. You interpret it as a whooping because that's the dynamic that we live in. That's the dynamic that we have, that's how, you know what, pain has become the instigator of our theology. Pain has. We cause pain to be the instigator of our theology. We allow the enemy, we allow the enemy to shift grace and give us a grudge. That's what we have did. That's what we allow. And we constantly accept this. This is a way, I'm again, I'm going re to release it to you again. The easy way to determine if the teacher is operating in current truth Hear me now. Hear me now. This is how you can determine it. If he's going to Leviticus and Deuteronomy, Moses, to validate his argument and continue, he's not operating in current truth. That's why 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As with Lord, the Lord first brought that to my spirit. I said, why should you divide the word of truth? If it's truth, it should be truth. He says, get it. It's bigger than just the truth. It is dividing old covenant law and new covenant law. New covenant promise as it is in Hebrew is not an addendum to the old covenant. It is to be put away. When we allow it to stay in the Mount of Transfigurations, when Moses, who represents the law, Elijah, who represents the prophet, comes on the scene, Peter thought it a wonderful thing to tell Jesus that he's going to build a tabernacle. What is a tabernacle? Tabernacle tent, a permanent dwelling place. He's telling Jesus, I'm about to put you in the company with tall cotton. Moses, who is in our history, woo, Elijah, by God, the power of God. Jesus did not answer Peter. It was the Lord himself, God himself, say, this is my son hear him then jesus picks it up luke 16 16 the law and the prophets were until john have you ever thought about that for a second what is he saying the law and the prophets. he tells them on the road to emmaus everything that the law the the prophets prophesied the law i am the fulfiller of everything and the prophet prophesied of me i am the fulfiller of it that's matthew 5 17. It's, it's, it's very clear. But when we have been caught with the filter, we can't see it. We can't see it because of the filter. So when people go to Leviticus, they go to Deuteronomy to beat or to win an argument, they are not operating true. Here's, here's an example. Let me give you an example. Remember in the text, the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. She was caught in the very, somebody saw her. Somebody that saw her was probably somebody that participated in it. But at that time, women couldn't speak for themselves. So they had to stand silent. But this time, the accusers ran into the prophet of all prophets. They ran into the Christ, the redeemer of ones that have been a repeat offender. They ran into him this time. They brought her and set her there and said, this woman was caught in a very, a very active adultery. Now listen to the next lines. It's in the scriptures been there the whole time. Moses said, the law said, old covenant says, past truth says, she should die. But what said you, Grace? What said you, Jesus? What said you? Now, here's what is so important to you for you to understand. That if Moses thought he had the authority to continue, he would have. If the, if the religious spirit believed that they had the power to execute, religious spirits 
don't believe they have the power to execute until you agree with it. So they say, what said you? If they had the power to kill her, they would have never asked grace. What do you say about this? See, there are people that's killing you that's not authorized to, but you don't have enough truth to refute it. You don't have enough truth. Remember, when Jesus is tried or questioned by Pilate, the night before he is questioned by Pilate, he is also on trial at the house of the high priest who did not have the authority to execute him. You got to understand this. They didn't have religious spirit, never have the power to execute grace. You just been taught it. You've been taught that seniority gives them the right to kill you. That's not the scripture. That's not the scripture. That's not the scripture. The accusers, the accusers went to Jesus and said, Moses, here it is, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Old Covenant Law, Old Covenant Truth says that she should die. But Grace says, no, she's not. Let him without fault cast the first stone. Now, I need to share with you what this actually means. This is why you're going to have to hear teaching like this or you're going to keep on being phony, playing, and keep on using these cliches and you're going to find out that life is staying the same. The devil is trying. No, it's not the devil. It's your refusal to hear and implement and see the grace come into your life. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work for this to happen. The accusers, Jesus says, Jesus says, let him without fault cast the first stone. Now check that out. Let him that is without fault. No, L listen, listen, Moses, listen, law. I agree with you. I'm gonna go with you on this one. But here are, here are the requirements. If you have never done anything, then you cast the first stone. Go ahead. I want you to do it because you say she deserve it. Start casting. But remember, the stones that you cast are the stones that are going to be cast at you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cast it. Do it. Do it. Do it. See, people got to understand this. When you start casting stones, remember, the word that you live by is the word that you're going to live by. If you live by the sword, you're going to what? died by the sword. Now we know that sword was interpreted to us as church babies as the word of the Lord. The sword, the sword is the word. So if you live by a certain word, you are going to die by that word if that word is not truth. So you've been actually the one killing yourself because your word was not proper. That he that is without fault cast the first stone. Here's something about grace, my brother. I got I gotta eat. Here's something about grace. If we encounter grace, me and you, if we encounter grace and that grace is for somebody else, to the person that's looking on, it seems like that person is getting off. Oh, I can't believe they're getting off. So they start accusing. Because when you experience grace and you don't need it, you'll see somebody else that get it and you'll think, I can't believe they got away. God, don't, God great gonna run out. God great gonna run out on you because you don't need it yet. So the Bible says that they left from the eldest, I love the scripture, from the eldest to what? The youngest. That means that the eldest is a, is a picture of maturity. The moment you get mature, you start saying, why am I trying to cast a stone? The moment you get mature, you say, why am I wasting my time trying to accuse somebody else when I need grace more than anybody else? I'm in this. My time, my time is up. So, so there is one scripture. I want to say this scripture. This gives you the picture of the truth. Because we have got to transcend. We have got to move into the proper truth, which is rhema. It's an on time word because we've been living in the old truth. That time is up. You listening to me right now. That time is up. You're going to see. You're going to see the results of a word being over. Hear me, in the days ahead, you're going to see the result. Now, some people say, no, uh, 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 because we think, well, I'm, I'm good at what I do. As a matter of fact, in this time of grace, what disqualifies in the time of grace is you being good at what you've done. 
How so? It's because you are good at teaching the old thing. And that's the thing that's going to disqualify you in the new thing. Listen, there's one scripture that will give a picture of what I just said. The whole Moses uh, versus law versus grace. Here it is. Here's what John said. Now, John is qualified to say this because he was one of the ones in the Mount of Transfiguration. Here's a scripture that completely validate what I've been saying. Law and grace and present truth versus old covenant. Old covenant truth. Moses. Old covenant is Moses. I will teach on the covenant process uh, uh, maybe on another day. But I need to show you this real quick. Here's the scripture that, that validates this. John chapter 1 verse number 17. Now look at this. Look at this. This says it all. Look at this. Look at this. For the law was given by who? Moses. But grace and truth. Look at that. But grace and truth came by Jesus. But grace and truth came by Jesus. Now, let me dissect that and then we'll pick it up tomorrow night, 630. John was talking in his present day about the life of Jesus who lived in his day. Now, here's what he said. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth. Now he's saying the only truth down to be lived by is the truth of grace, the new covenant grace. Now, lo, now Moses is just dating the law. It's not dating the truth now because God has shifted into the new covenant. So it's a grace covenant and now grace and truth is the only truth that you can actually live successful in God. It's the only thing that God is looking at. He was saying the law that was given by Moses in his day was the truth. But now grace is here and it is the present truth and the only truth that God endorses. I've said some heavy stuff tonight. But God wanted you to hear this. God wanted you to hear this because John was qualified because he was in the transfiguration. He heard God say to Moses and Elijah. He heard him say to Peter, you're going to have to move them to enter into this. You got to get rid of that before you can ever walk into this season of your life and that's what god is challenging each of us on tonight he says i'm challenging you you've been praying hard you've been getting all your friends to bombard heaven you've been getting all that and it hasn't worked why because the part that is most important is the part that's not done you're gonna have to transcend in the truth and when truth is transformed in your mind you don't have to worry about if god is going to perform what he said <laughs> Law, Moses, the law, old truth, tells us what God demands from us. Present truth, grace, tells us what God gives to us. That's as simple as it gets. We're living in a time of grace and God is trying to give us something. But he can't put new wine in old wine skin. What is he trying to say? I can't give you grace, the truth, when you're still trying to live in old wine skin, the old covenant. It does not work. I refuse to do it. Let's pray together. Now, for those of you, I want to pray and agree with you because I know this is difficult. When you've been taught something for year after year, and now you're being taught something by somebody that is virtually new and you don't know, and they ain't got the time credentials as the person that taught me. And so the enemy knows that. The enemy knows that. And so you want to prepare yourself and prepare yourself to hear something from some people. See, we use something that God never used. God never used seniority or popularity. Those are two things we go after to before we believe anything that God is saying. And that's why we miss most of the stuff that he says. And so now you're going to be challenged. God is going to say something to you. And you're going to be challenged to get over the package. The cover. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be challenged. I got to get over the cover. That cover don't look like. He says, no, it don't. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. And I'm wrapping it up like that because it is a discerner season. It's not for the people that think they're senior. It's not for the people that think they're popular. Now, they can be included in this. But what I'm saying, the, the senior and the popular don't have an upper hand on the newcomers. That's a word there. They don't have an upper hand. And so we got to live this thing and we got to live this level. And God is going to do. I will open up even more tomorrow. There are so many things. I didn't even get nothing but the beginning of what god is trying to say to us we are in for a major shift major shift 
God is shifting his church and ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Now, he might not shift in buildings. He might not be the, he might not even he might have be able to do minute moves over there. But there are places that he's about to do monumental moves. Uh, monumental. He's listen, there are some people that were disqualified because of the past truth that they were living in. But in this present truth, grace is going to catapult you into your new life. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Father, I thank you so much for this word. Thank you for this revelation. Thank you for the heroes of this word. Thank you so much for being so good, being so God, and giving us grace, and God giving us the fortitude. And know what? And what it takes for us to believe you, God, when we've been in a lifetime of struggle, a lifetime of battling. And now you're telling me that you're going to give me my life. Lord, help me to believe. Help my unbelief. Help me. God, in Scripture, you help the Father that had unbelief. You can help us, God, to believe you. And we do. We believe you. So, therefore, we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. I I, 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 I appreciate you so much. Uh, this Monday night, I mean, this Saturday night, this Saturday night, we're this Saturday morning, what was that, Saturday night, 10 a.m., we are in our Mississippi location, our Mississippi church. We look forward to being there this Saturday, uh, uh, May the 6th. Now, help us go. Here's how you can do that. Here's how you can help us take this gospel. You, you can help me by uh, sowing into Pastor G for NOB. This is how we travel. This is how we get uh, are able to support the things that we do when you sow into those things. We're appreciative. There's some of you, I thank God for you. Thank you for being perpetual sowers into us. And now, you know, we're sowing, we're sowing. Well, you don't, you don't do it. I'm not talking to you. You know who I'm talking to. You guys know who I'm talking to. Now, if you're coming in late, if you would, go back and listen to this. Listen to this again. The enemy going to tell you it don't matter, but you need to hear as much of this as you possibly can. Now, there's some of you that's going to wrap your mind around this and watch this. You are going to excel in this season. You're going to excel. Watch. There are many of you that's going to continue to beg and plead and try to force God's hand at something that he already said I released. If that's the way you want to do it, continue. I just report. You can believe if you want to. That's just the way it is. Thank you guys so much again. Sylvia Wilson, Lorenzo, blessings to y'all. Uh, Mama Lois, blessings on blessings. Mama Lois, blessings to you. Teresa Smith Johnson, blessings, Teresa. Always a pleasure to have you in the house. Apostle Latasha Anderson, blessings. Harrison White, Harrison, blessings, man. Blessings, we've been enjoying Harrison at our services. Blessings, man. Blessings to you and your family, man. Donna Stevens, blessings. Blessings. Tom W. Scott. I think it's Pastor Tom W. Scott. Blessings, man. Gayla Brown. Blessings. Latoya Denise. Blessings. Sylvia. Sylvia Starks Brown. Blessings. Uh, 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 the sons are in the house. Blessings. Blessings. I hope both of y'all are in there. I, I, I know mom sucks in. I, 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 man, y'all are great people. You hear me? Y'all are number one in my book. Y'all write up that. Blessings to y'all. A pastor Marissa Brown. Blessings on blessings of that. Angelita Coleman. Blessings on blessings. Apostle Renetta Rockamore. Blessings on blessings. Connie Farrell. Blessings. Tamika Henderson. Blessings. Butterflies in the sky. Blessings. Kimberly Keybell. Blessings. Dr. Otis Richmond. Get ready. He will be with me Friday. Blessings. Carry along. Blessings. Of course, my mom. Blessings. Pastor Gail Johnson. Blessings. Priscilla Jones. Blessings. Apostle Dennis Cook. Blessings. I hope I don't miss David and Tonya Boyd. Blessings. Bobby Gaither. Blessings. Bobby. Can't wait to see you guys this weekend. Uh, Kimberly White Clark. Blessings. Namisha Hartwick. Blessings. Jobari Williams. Blessings. Pastor Apostle Rodney Williams. Blessings. House of Hope, Stuck God. Katrina Robinson, blessings. Renee Danford, blessings. Polita Finley, blessings. Jackie Dyer, blessings. Mikey J, blessings. Susie Marshall, blessings. All right, I got everybody. Thank you guys so much. Tune in tomorrow night, 6.30. I'm going to continue this. There's some things I need to share. There's some things you need to hear. And there's some things both of us need to apply so that we can see the major manifestation. That's a winner. 
All right. Thank you guys so much. Now, uh, 6, 6 a.m. in the morning, you can tune in to Lady T, Teresa Divine Whitmore, for Eat Early Information, uh, Early Affirmations with Lady T. What is, what is that? It gets your day started out right. What you say is what you pray. What's coming out of your mouth is what you're seeing in your life. That's just the way it is. That's how God set it up. So you need to set your day up right. Amen, somebody. Set your day up right. All right, guys. We will see you guys at 6 a.m. Lady T will see you at 6 a.m. And then I will see you at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night. I'm going to get you out for the basketball game. Come on now. Come on in the house. Blessings. All right, Pastor David. See you Friday night. See you tomorrow night, too, in here. But I'll see you Friday night in the, in the physical. I mean, in Saturday morning in the physical. All right, guys. Blessings. On blessings, 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 on blessings.